everyone, it's Emmy. Welcome back to my second year journey as a beekeeper. So today is September 1st and I am back to do a little unboxing. John sent me a bunch of wonderful things. Thank you so much, John. And today I'm going to be unboxing an Apame bottom board. Now, if you're not familiar with Apame, Apame, I believe, is a Turkish company that has a whole line of beehives that are made out of plastic, insulated plastic. And the idea is that this insulation keeps the bees warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Now, I frankly don't know much about these hives, but John seems to love them, and he sent me a bottom board, and I'm going to install it in this hive right here. And if you saw my last two vlog posts, you know that this hive has been struggling with small hive beetle. So it's not to the point of a major infestation. I think each time I open the cover, I kill about 10 beetles. It's not overrun, but that can happen quickly. So that's why I want to get rid of them as fast as possible because we're coming into fall and coming into winter. And this is the time when the hives start making their fat bees that are supposed to survive winter. We wanna make sure we are on top of the mites and on top of the small hive beetles. So I'll be doing a mite check very, very soon as well. But today, my plan is to unbox the Ape of May bottom board, install some diatomaceous earth into the bottom. This bottom board is unique because it has a tray with some mesh on the top. Now the bees corral the beetles that are inside the hive. They fall through the holes in the bottom board and fall into a tray of diatomaceous earth, which are dried diatoms, which come from the ocean really really tiny microscopic kind of like shells and it dries out the beetles and it also kind of cuts up into their exoskeleton sounds terrible but small hive beetle is not kind to beehives the larva is particularly terrible for hives the larva uncap the honey which starts to ferment and they also eat bee larva which of course is not a good deal <laughs> and uh, the whole hive can go down pretty quickly they start creating, there's a yeast apparently that has a symbiotic relationship with the beetles that can cause this gross slime all over the hive. So if you spot small hive beetle in your hive, get rid of them. So I'm also going to be placing traps. I ordered four beetle barns and these are flat plastic traps. I'm going to put some bait inside and I'm going to put them all in my hives. Not only the one that has the problem, but in my other ones as well as just kind of a preventative. So that's today's agenda. Install the bottom board set the hive traps and yeah i think tomorrow i'll do my let's see september mite count i did a mite count in july all of my hives need to be treated it's always best practice to treat all of your hives if one of them has high numbers because bees do kind of go between hives and if one is infected it's very likely it will infect another so but all of mine had treatable amounts i had seven mites in two of them and 11 in another so the threshold is usually three for half a cup of bees. So I will recheck. Hopefully my mite numbers will be low. If not, I have to treat again. And yes, again, we want to have our bees healthy for winter because winter is ruthless. This is when the virus is raining their heavy head. The bees need to be healthy. So, all right, so enough talking. Let's go check out the bottom board. But before we do that, we have some orientation flights. Here is the split that I made from hive number one. It is now doing well, finally. It requeened itself after its first queen kind of failed. This is my Reba Grant queen. This hive is doing very well. That's it, okay. Okay, so here's the Ape May box. And here is the bottom board. All wrapped in plastic. Wow. Looks like a bunch of different entrance reducers here. Looks like that's the full open position. This is just for ventilation. I think that's reduced to prevent the queen to get out, but the workers can get out, and this is the handle to turn it. I think these are all the same, they're just different colors. Yep, and then I think you just affix it with a screw right there. So I've got eight of them, I think. Those. I 
Actually, I think I'm going to attach these screws once I get over to my hive. But I'm going to go ahead and fill the tray with diatomaceous earth. So, I'll open this up. And put a layer of this powder. And put a layer of this powder at the bottom. very fine, so careful not to breathe it in. I would say that's probably about a third of a cup. Try to evenly distribute that. Now I'm going to place that back in there. Pop that back in. All right, let's head over to the hive. Okay, first things first, like always, give them a little puff. Um, coming again we're going to replace the bottom board and we're going to set a couple traps the trap that I'm going to be using today is this and this one is called the beetle barn by be excellent and they're very inexpensive just a few dollars but actually with shipping they end up being about five bucks each pretty simple here you put some bait in here 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 and here you can use the bait of your choice I'm going to be using a mixture of Crisco and boric acid that I showed in my other beetle trap video. Place that in there, close this up. The bees will corral the beetles into these holes and keep them in there. The beetles will eat the bait and die inside the trap. So you got to go in there and empty these, of course, because if they get filled up and the bait is missing, then they become useless. So I'll come back in a couple days and see how well these do. CD trap didn't work all that well for me, but the placement wasn't all that great, so I went ahead and just purchased these. So, let's see. I've already got mine set, so I'm just going to place them in there when I get in the hive. Alright, so, here we go. I'm also going to place just a little bit of pollen patty. I've cut this pollen patty up into basically two by seven inch strips. I'm going to put one strip in each hive. This is an attractant for small hive beetles, so you have to be judicious when putting this on. I'm not going to put too much because this hive already has a problem with the beetles, but I definitely want to boost the bees and the larvae. The bees need protein or pollen for raising brood, and right now we're just coming out of dearth. I just saw some goldenrod blooming yesterday, and I see some pollen on the bees, but this is just to help them out. So I'm going to come back in a couple days, see how much they eat. If they haven't eaten any, I'm going to remove it because then it just becomes food for the beetles. Okay, all right, so, bottom board. I'm gonna grab my hive tool, because this is where I've been noticing a lot of the beetles, up top here. So, I've actually been catching a lot of them. The bees tend to corral the small hive beetle underneath the inner cover. And I put a couple Swiffer pads there, which ensnares them, but also the hive beetles just tend to crawl. So I'm gonna go in there and push them as I see them. So give them a little puff so they know I'm coming. And uh, yeah, here we go. So it's been two days since I was in here. I was going in here daily beforehand, trying to get rid of these small hive beetles. So let's see how they're doing. Okay. So, hive beetle. See him crawling there? Squash those MFs. See how the bees corral them to the top? So I'm gonna bring this over here and squash them. So I'm gonna bring it over here so you can see what I'm doing. So let's see how many I caught under the swiffer pad. Oh good. There's some caught in there, that's great. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. Smashing all these. I'm actually just gonna leave these flipper pads in place. Nine, ten. So just on the swiffer pad I have 
ten. The bees also get stuck, so I try to help them get unstuck. Okay, anything else in there underneath in the corners? No. Okay. If I see them, squash them. Okay, now I'm going to set this bottom board, set that beetle cover aside. In addition to the Swiffer pads, I'm going to place a beetle trap right there. I'm going to place this inner cover so the bees will be a little calmer, undisturbed. these two and kind of do this together. Okay. Alright, let's take a look at this bottom board here. Let's see Gorilla. Do I see any larva? No, it doesn't need larva either. Okay, so I'm going to remove this bottom board and replace it with my new one. So this is a hive stand that I made out of just some scrap lumber that I had around. And I put these shims here to angle the hive a little bit forward so the moisture tends to go down the bottom board. Okay, let's place our new bottom board down. Be a good fit. Open up the entrance pretty wide here. It's pretty hot. That looks good. Now the bees are going to be a little bit confused because their entrance is now different. They're going to smell the hive, so they're going to know where to go. But the entrance used to be on the sides here. The entrance used to be on this side and on that side. So now the bees look they're like, where's my entrance? So it's going to take them a little bit of time to get reoriented. But that's fine. So there it is, installed. I just have to screw those screws in. I forgot to put in pollen patty. So I'm going to do that next. Give them some pollen patty. Oh great, check this out. So I also put some Swiffer pads here, and I've got some beetles there too. So, one, two, three, four. One dead bee, but we're just gonna squash those. Take a look underneath too, see if there's anything there. No, right on top. Great, one dead bee. Pretty good. All right, let's check the other one down here. This one also caught a couple. Look at that. One, two, three. Great. So I'm gonna I'm gonna replace those. Actually, I'm just gonna leave those there. So all in total, I had ten in the Swiffer, and then I probably killed. Another 10 on its own. Okay. So, bees on all frames. Let me give them some. Look now a little bit so I can. Let's see some capped brood. Place the pollen patty right there. See what they do. And I should look for honey stores while I'm here. So I might start feeding these girls, we're supposedly just coming out of dearth, but I've got some nectar I spun out earlier this year, so I think I'm going to start giving these ladies some nectar. Because again, we're getting ready for fall and winter. So I'm going to come back in a couple days and see how they do with that pollen, and if they've eaten it up, 
Oh, this girl has some pollen on her. Good job. Okay. All right, I'm gonna button that one up and then we're gonna put some pollen on the other hives. Okay, now I'm just gonna finish by putting these screws in. And that'll keep the hive body from slipping off. So I just fastened those screws and that will keep the hive body from slipping off the bottom board. All right, looking good. Now to the other hives. So I just installed this, right? Let's check out how the tray works. Look at that. I already have a beetle. Trying to get away. Covered in dust. Another one over there. All right. Cool. Now these ones cannot go back into the hive. Any others? Is that another one? I think that's a grasshopper or a cricket. So I already have two. Sweet. So far so good. Okay, same here. Same thing here. Give them a little puff. I'm put in that beetle trap and give me some pollen. trap anyways right there. Cover them right up. And what do I see here? I see honey stores. Where's the cat brew there? Numbers look good. This hive has plenty of honey. Let's see if I can find any eggs. was made this year from my original hive. Oh, this has lots of pollen, which is great. They're not short on pollen. Beautiful. So we're getting to the edge of the brood nest. Maybe the brood nest is up above now. Ah, there's some capped brood. And there's newly hatched Brood, brood or baby bees. There's newly hatched larva. I'm gonna always look for my queen. She usually likes to move pretty quickly. I'm gonna go in the sunlight and see if I can see any eggs. So, in the sunlight, I spotted eggs. So that is great. And newly hatched larva. So if you don't spot your queen, if you see signs of a queen, that's great. Just gonna inspect one more frame here. And... This too has freshly laid eggs. That means the queen was around here somewhere. So this is a good time to scan for a queen. This queen is not marked, so. But since I saw signs of her, I'm just gonna button this up. And I will give them a couple frames of nectar and honey from so this. This ram has pollen on it, but not any too much nectar. So, put this one. This too is pretty light. Okay, so this frame is pretty much empty. I'm going to switch this one out with a frame with nectar on it. Give the bee something to eat. This one is full of nectar. See it all glistening there? Now, they took this out of my small beetle hive, but I placed it in a freezer for a couple days to kill any eggs or uh, 
moth larva. So now I'm going to put these all back. I'll turn this to position so I can replace my original frames. Oops, sorry. You want to be gentle here. Don't want to squish anybody. Especially our queen. Now this frame I'm going to replace. Right back in here. Alright. Now I'm going to give these bees some pollen patty as well. Right across the bird nest right there. Okay, great. This one's all set. So that's it. September 1st, 2018. Wrapped up today for all three hives. I placed hive beetle traps in all of them. I replaced the bottom board of my first hive with an Ape of May bottom board that has diatomaceous earth on the bottom, again, to corral more small hive beetles. And I placed a small piece of pollen patty in all hives just to start fattening them up for winter because we're just starting to get some pollen in but the bees may need some help. So I'm going to come back in a couple days, see how the pollen patties look. If they need more, I'm just going to add the same size strip, about the size of a piece of bacon. And yeah, alright, thanks for tuning in and I shall see you in the next one. Bye!